Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me today. In this video, I'm going to be painting a ballerina. I'll show you step by step how to do it. Let's get started. I uh, am going to be doing it on my sketchbook here. I'm using acrylic paints. These are heavy body acrylics, but you can use uh, regular acrylics if you'd like. They will work just fine as well. Um, and I've printed out a silhouette that we'll be using um, to transfer on to our design. The background is just going to be a simple um, impressionist type background. So I'm going to be using a, about a one inch flat brush here and just some various different yellows and this is uh, cadmium yellow light, Hansa yellow medium, cadmium red light, uh, burnt sienna, red iron oxide black, and phthalo blue. So I'm going to do kind of a halo effect starting up here in this corner here and we'll be working very quickly from one color to the next. So I'm starting with white and cadmium yellow light and then I'm mixing in some Hansa yellow medium. And you can use whatever yellows that you happen to have or if you just have one yellow you can use it. I'm just going from the lighter to the darker. Here, I'm going to add a little bit more white right here in the middle. And then we're going to grab a little bit of red and mix that with our yellow. And grab a little bit of this yellow. Cadmium yellow light. There we go. I don't want it to be too strong of a transfer or a transition yet. Add a little bit of white to it to kind of soften it. I'm just doing quick like kind of X strokes here. Don't blend too much up into your white area. So if you need to blend down a color, you can just pick up a little bit of the color that's right up next to it. In this case, it's the cadmium yellow medium. We'll mix them all the way up into this corner here. Go a little bit farther down than you think you want to with, with each color. And then when you blend your next color in, you'll cover over a little bit of what you've done. So there we go grab some white now and just go back over some of this transition area here with a little bit of that. A little bit of the cadmium yellow light there. Just want to make sure that I'm keeping that center really nice and bright. Okay. It's looking good. Now let's add some of the cadmium red that's kind of a little bit darker. And I'm going for that kind of brush stroked impressionist look. So go ahead and leave some of these strong brush strokes showing. This is really a lot of fun if you just kind of let yourself enjoy the process and don't get too caught up in what it looks like right off the bat. I do kind of X strokes, but you can do whatever works for you. It's not supposed to look exactly like mine because this is sort of impressionist, so it'll be your own interpretation of it. Let me grab some yellow and just do kind of a foreground right here. All the way across, very low to the bottom there, maybe the bottom quarter or so, even lower than the quarter mark on my page. This will be kind of a, where our ballerina will be dancing. We'll go back through and add some more of these other colors as we do it. Need some more yellow. 
Okay, so let's start adding in, actually let's grab this red iron oxide and start adding in some of that. If your paint's getting sticky, just add a little bit of water to it. We don't want to go over this area right now once it starts to dry, so just keep that in mind. You want to kind of work in layers from your light to dark and then let each layer dry completely before you try to cover over it with another color. So let's grab some of this burnt sienna. Get some darker areas going on in here. Ballerina is going to sit right about right here. So we'll have this darker corner over here. Maybe some shadows happening. Some of this red iron oxide and add some yellow to it. See what that does. Make kind of a deep orangey color. That's interesting. These darker colors down here in the ground as well. And then I'm going to add just a tiny bit of blue to this burnt sienna, and it'll make this really almost black brown color. and dark that is. So we use that up here in this corner and on this far edge. Grab some burnt sienna. Mix that with the cadmium red light and do some of that over the top of that just to kind of get a good transition so it's not too brown in that corner. It's got some color to it. I've got some yellow still in my brush that'll kind of work its way out. Soften it up a little bit. Okay, I'm liking that. Um, let's grab a little bit of the dark and we'll just firm up this horizon line here just a little bit, just using the edge of my brush and kind of going along that line there. I'm going to soften it up a little bit because I don't want it quite that dark, but that'll give us a starting point. and bright right there in the middle like that light color is shining down on it I'm just using this one brush for the whole painting and then I'll switch over to my more detailed brush for just the ballerina silhouette because she'll need some more detailed work all right using combinations of all the colors that I've done up here and just kind of working them into this foreground here. I'm trying to 
keep it fairly light though. I don't want it to get too dark. shining down on it. Having these contrasts between the dark and light really helps it kind of pop for us. Maybe add a little bit of white right here. Just kind of a light shimmer. Just slide my brush back and forth lightly to pick up a little bit of highlight. And I'm going to mix the red with the Hansa yellow light again here and just go back over this one area right here where we had that transition. Now this original coat it should be dry for the most part. So we can go back in and kind of mess with it a little bit and tweak it and add a little bit more blending if we want. Add a little bit of white to my yellow here so that it covers. Your yellow is very transparent so if you're wanting to cover over another color that's why we started with the yellows first because we wanted to make sure that um, they kind of were undiluted by other colors. But if you get too much of this other colors mixed into your yellows you can always add a little bit of white to your yellow and it'll make it more opaque and cover over your other colors a little bit. So. All right, I think that looks good. It's kind of a nice glow. It's got this dark kind of moody section over here. I'm going to add a little bit of this red over the top of it just to kind of add some really bright contrast. This is the cadmium red light. If you don't have cadmium red light, you could use like a cadmium orange or um, even a cadmium red and just add a little bit of yellow to it. Um, and you could do this painting in any color scheme really that you want to if you just notice I'm kind of just going from light to dark, darker colors. So really you could um, use whatever colors work for you. Um, I'm going to add a little bit, just a touch of like blue into this dark area too, just for a little tiny touch of blue. Kind of for some unexpected color there. Grab that red. brush here and I feel like I want to have a little bit of yellow orange up there in that corner so I'm just going to pick up a little bit of that orange that I mixed with the cadmium red and and Hansa medium and add a little bit more of that darker orange up here in this corner. I feel like it's too light. We'll even add a tiny, tiny bit of the red. Okay, that's better. Just felt like that corner was not anchored properly. I'm going to add a little bit more of my white. Cadmium yellow light right here. Just to really brighten that up. And we can transfer transition back over the top of that a little bit. I'm going to 
add a little bit of that yellow down here. I think I want to use my burnt sienna and cadmium red here and just trans transition a little bit of orange right there and I'll even add a little bit of white to make it softer. Mix up a color with some yellow, cadmium yellow medium or hands of yellow medium. Burnt sienna and red there. There we go. Just felt like there's a lot of that red color in there. I want to have a little bit of brown working in there as well. Grab our yellow, white. You don't have to be this fussy, but you do want to get the right colors, so just whatever you feel like on yours. Just don't overwork it to where the paint, make sure that if you do this, that you make sure that this background is dry while you're working over the top of it, otherwise you're under layers can start lifting if once the acrylic starts to dry they get sticky so don't overwork it too much while it's wet okay that's better I think a little bit happier with that color a little bit softer blend from the yellow to the red there. Okay, one more layer of white, just plain white this time, right here, just to really brighten up that area. And I'm going to wipe my brush off and then just blend around the edges a little bit. Just Soften those edges and blend in that white. There we go. We'll put a little tiny bit down here too. All right, so now we've got our background set. Got some good highlights and background for our ballerina to set. And I'm just going to I'll fold up her bottom edge so we know where to place her. And you can tr you could trace this onto tracing paper if you wanted to, but I'm just gonna use this drawing to kind of get an idea of where I want to place her. I think I want her, I'll just do like this, so I can kind of see where I'm placing her. I think that that's probably actually right there is about good, maybe just slightly to the center and just below the horizon line, about to right there. Okay, so... down her foot right there actually would have been easier to use a tracing paper but I'm lazy today this is transfer paper I'm just gonna slide it under here and we'll 
will transfer on our ballerina. Just want to make sure that she's staying vertical. And we'll transfer on her silhouette with you using a stylus here. You can use a pencil if you don't have a stylus. And I just want to go right on the inside of the transfer line. And really be careful. Get your details really carefully traced on there. And don't move the paper at all. So I keep in a firm grip with this hand while I'm tracing. Go all the way around. There we go. Put that on the trace down there. Now it's just a matter of drawing her in or filling her in with my got a number two round here, just a small round brush. I'm going to add a little bit of water to my black paint to make it a little easier to work with. And then I'm just going to carefully transfer on her features. It's as easy as that. No drawing skills required. If you want to try to draw your ballerina, um, let's start with the head. And do kind of a circular the, the nose is sort of a triangle here. This part from the forehead and the chin is going to be almost a straight line here. I'm not even going to put in her mouth features. doesn't need it. Slender neck. Her shoulders are at an angle here. I'll have the transfer uh, link for you so you can transfer her on using mine or there's several silhouettes available on the internet that you can use but I really honestly don't don't feel like um, tracing is cheating I know when you're first beginning you feel like you have to draw everything but honestly Tracing is very good practice for drawing because you have to really focus on the details that you're tracing and can really help you see better what the shapes are that you're transferring. Very valid way of creating art and a lot of a lot of professional artists use tracings. It's just a faster way of getting their results. My fingertips are kind of Keep her hand very small if you can. There we go. This finger is looking a little weird.
for her tutu, I'm just going to do kind of a jagged line along the outside edge there. So the whole tutu will be kind of done that way, pulling from the outside in towards her waist. So that it sort of looks like it's ruffled. You could have done this ballerine a little bit bigger. Probably could have filled up the space a little bit more with her. I'm going to go right up to that tutu, but not over it. I think I want to leave just a little bit of space there to kind of create a division. And the reason I go on the inside of my trace line is so that if I get off my tracing just slightly, I can kind of make some adjustments without creating a larger silhouette so just allows for a little bit more control I'm going to grab some of this brown color and just add a little bit on this thigh right here might let it dry a little bit before I try that we'll keep going dog. And the ballerina's toes are kind of squared off because they have those little special shoes that kind of allow them to stand on their toes so don't feel like you have to point them too drastically. All right, there's our ballerina. And I'm going to grab a little bit of the white and red here. And I still have the brown, black in my brush here, so it's kind of mixing together. I'm just going to add a little bit of this color into her tutu, just lightly on top, so that it's like the light's kind of shining through it a little bit. And then maybe a little bit on the transition between her legs. Maybe a little bit on her hair. Underside of her arms. Okay, not going to be too much detail there, but I just wanted to add a little bit to define her slightly. Grab that black again and go back over that. All right. Now to finish it, I'm just going to add a little bit of shadow to the foreground here and the light source is coming this way her shadow would be kind of coming off this way so I'm going to just kind of do these horizontal lines to sort of indicate that her shadow is over here and maybe this leg is it'd make this X so
And that's all we need to do. We don't have to get too detailed about it, but we just kind of want to put a little bit of shadow in there for And then we can go back in with our yellow. Mix with a little bit of white and just sort of go over the shadow to sort of soften it and fade it a little bit. So it's not so bright. All right, there's our ballerina. Hope you've enjoyed it. Um, if you try this, you can share it with me on my Thankful Art page. Thanks for watching today. If you've enjoyed this video, please leave a thumbs up, a comment, and subscribe to my channel. I do shows every Tuesday and Saturday. See you next time.